Asia Pacific. And we're indeed honored that Singapore is the first city to be able to join, to host this conference outside of Australia since it began in 2009. Today, APEC welcomes more than 1,800 participants from well over 30 countries. Globally, the prevalence of autism is growing. The World Health Organization estimates that one in 160 children has autism. More recent studies indicate that the number is increasing. This is also the trend in Singapore. The number of children below age six diagnosed with suspected autism each year increased by 70% between 2012 and 2017, from 610 a year in 2012 to 1,031 a year in 2017. However, we are also better informed now. There is greater awareness of autism in society, greater understanding, improved techniques for early detection and intervention, a greater acceptance by parents and caregivers to send their children for diagnosis and support, and better means and technology to improve our infrastructure and physical well-being. Countries in the Asia-Pacific region, we may all be at different stages in our journey of inclusiveness for persons with autism, or may adopt different kinds of strategies and approaches, but APAC is a good platform for us to come together to share new findings and best practices and to sharpen each other's thinking and learn from one another. Indeed, we hope that by having this conference here in Singapore, we have the opportunity uh, to share the learning that you bring to us with our friends and neighbours in the region and in Southeast Asia. And in fact, in November last year, uh, our leaders in ASEAN endorsed an ASEAN enabling master plan, underscoring our various member states' dedication and commitment to try to continue to mainstream the interests and rights of persons with special needs in all aspects of our life. Ambitious, difficult, challenging, but as Denise says, either we flee, we fight, or we face it. And I think as a region, whatever our journey, our stage in our journey is, we want to come together, learn from each other, learn from APEC, and do better for our people. The special needs landscape is very diverse, and needs are often unique. Each type of special need has different challenges, and this also changes as a person grows up, as a child, then a teenager, a young adult, and into middle age and beyond. And each season of life brings different concerns, <coughs> childcare concerns, education, training, continuing training, employment, and caregiving. For us to create a more inclusive society, and for persons with autism to thrive and live meaningful lives, our plans must have a frame, must have coherence, and it takes a whole united community to make it happen across different stages. So we've adopted a whole-of-life approach to understand needs at different life stages and to develop targeted solutions. In essence, in the early years, early intervention for children with special needs is crucial. We've therefore made it more affordable and customised for different levels of needs. We recently made education compulsory for students with moderate to severe special education needs, and along the way, we created a dedicated agency, SG Enable, to increase job placements and job support. They work with employers to train and to hire differently able persons. As you quite rightly saw in the video, the work of ARC partnering with other agencies to create opportunities job by job, employer by employer. Not something that you can dictate from high above, but something that you need to roll up your sleeves, get onto the ground, persuade, sell, encourage, support, incentivize, so that you create place after place after place. We also set up the Special Needs Trust Company, the SNTC, to support parents and caregivers with future care planning and financial security. But we need to do more to make our community more inclusive for persons with autism. For example, we continue to face challenges 
in developing lifelong learning and employment opportunities for persons with special needs here in Singapore. We also need to do much more to address caregivers' concerns about the care for their loved ones with special needs when they are no longer around. The ageing caregiver worrying about an older child, what will happen when I'm no longer around? Pressing deeply personal concern. There have been many learning points for us over the years. We need to deepen our partnerships and build stronger networks to achieve this because no one can go it alone, can achieve all of this alone. Because if we aspire for a person with different abilities, autism or other special needs, to be able to live their fullest potential, to be able to live in a society that's accepting, to be able to work, to be able to pursue his or her dreams, to be able to grow old and age with dignity. That is not something a government on its own can do. Not something that employers alone can do. Not something that disability organisations and advocates alone can do. It requires an entire community to change its mindset and to make provision to support such a vision. Knowledge is not exclusive, but collective. And the wisdom of any government must lie in its ability and willingness to listen to others, where the gaps are, what is working, what isn't. As Mr. Nispoa mentioned last Saturday, our Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Heng Sui Kiet, shared a vision about how our government will partner Singaporeans in a deeper way. This goes to the very heart of how we understand and approach issues and solve problems. It is not a statement at atmospheric levels, but how we will apply this on the ground in every aspect of our work. This means in practice that we are committed to sincere partnership to design and implement solutions with social service agencies, with our caregivers, and our persons with special needs. We established a basic frame here in our city-state over 10 years ago. Our very first master plan, which we call the Enabling Master Plan, was launched in 2007. We built on top of it. The second master plan was launched in 2012, and most recently, the third Enabling Master Plan in 2017. Each of these master plans was created in consultation with many individuals, those with special needs themselves, their caregivers, social service agencies, and employers. And we've been building up each area progressively, for example, in the area of employment. In the first master plan, we set up the job placement and job support program and the open door fund to help persons with special needs gain employment and for employers to hire them. In the second master plan, we created SG Enable, an agency dedicated to enabling persons with disability and supporting them in employment. In the third master plan, we have set up a work group to look into the spectrum of lifelong learning and employment opportunities. We are implementing our third master plan with increased focus on creating closer partnerships identifying problems upstream and finding solutions to them, and building networks of support located within the community. Recently, we launched several work groups that are led together with members of the wider community. This includes making preschools more inclusive. My colleague, Senior Parliamentary Secretary, Faisal Ibrahim, is leading this with Associate Professor Kenneth Poon from the National Institute of Education. Another work group seeks to improve employment opportunities which empowers individuals and is mindful of the fourth industrial revolution and what it has in store in terms of uncertainty for jobs for persons with special needs. My colleague Sam is leading this with Mr. Denise Park. And increasing the ease of independent living, how can we better support persons with special needs, persons with autism who live in the community? My colleague Sam, again, will be leading this with Ms. Chia Yong Yong, another strong advocate for persons with special needs. But supporting all these work groups are not armies of bureaucrats, no. Our agencies, our officials are working very closely in these work groups with a diverse group of Singaporeans who come from the people sector, from corporate sector and academics. 
who come together, work together, bring to the table different perspectives. It will not all be plain sailing. We will all have different points of view. We will all want different things at different times. But I think when we work together, come together, build personal relationships, understand each other's points of view, I think we move forward together and we move together more cohesively and we build Singapore together. We are also enhancing support for our caregivers, our long-suffering 